Okay, gang, the purpose of this particular video is to introduce some academic databases to you. Think of academic databases as a uh, Google search engine or Google search engine for reliable, credible evidence. So it's there, it's trustworthy, use it. It's meant to really help you out with your research process. Now, the two documents that we're going to be looking at while I make this particular video as well will be your accessing academic database document and then your note card document. Now, I'm going to go over the first page and then we're going to get to the second page later on. Now, I'm going to mention empirical research a lot to you guys. Okay, there are two different types of empirical research quantitative and qualitative. Okay, and as I have highlighted here, empirical research occurs when a researcher, which is you, gains knowledge through direct or indirect observation or experience. Now, it can occur through quantitative or qualitative means. Now, a good research paper will incorporate both methods to ensure enough evidence to support your arguments. So you're like, okay, great, you defined it correctly. What does that mean exactly? Well, qualitative research essentially are quotes and testimonials from experts and officials that can help support your particular argument. There are also summaries over particular stories that you hear or observations that um, observers make about a particular subject or that scientists make as well. Okay, these can be words, images, or objects in the form of the data collected. Again, words, quotes, opinions, statements, interviews, open-ended responses, observations, reflections, field notes. Now, quantitative, like quantity, basically you are looking at numbers and statistics. So these are basically precise measurements using structured and validated data collection instruments. Essentially, again, these are statistics and numbers that have been generated by professionals who you can consider trustworthy, okay? So those are the two different types of research that you're gonna be looking at. With that said, let's go ahead and start accessing databases. Now, again, I'm going to be using this particular document. If you like to use documents and if you like these steps, use them. You can also use this video as well. Now, for this micro paper, you're gonna find, would be required to find one of each of the following formats in the academic databases provided to you. You have to find a magazine article, one newspaper article, and one academic journal. From those three particular articles, you're going to na need to make 15 cards between the three sources. That's not 15 cards per source, it's between, okay? And you're going to use that using the note card process described in documentation that I have for you in the video that I'll make for you as well. Last but not least, you're going to make a works cited inquiry. So let's go ahead and start looking at an academic database, and for this video, we're going to focus on an academic journal. So I'm going to my search engine. I have the Kansas State Library website already pulled up. Step one says you essentially go to kslib.info. You're going to pull up that particular website. It's going to look like this opening site that you see in front of you. Next, you go to online sources, or excuse me, online resources. You click on that. Give it a second, and then you're going to pull up a variety of search engines. These are essentially all separate databases that the Kansas State Library collects. For this particular assignment, I want you to look at Academic Search Premier, Master File Premier, Newspaper Source Plus, and Student Research Center. Academic Search Premier focuses on a decent amount of different types of sources, but it really tends to focus on, focuses on academic journals, master file. It's similar to academic search, but includes a few more newspaper and magazine articles. Newspaper Source Plus is exactly that, focuses on newspapers. And Student Research Center as well is very similar to Master File Premier. And we'll get into each in their own separate video. But for this, let's go ahead and click on Academic Search Premier. And this is one particular database, okay? So the database name is Academic Search Premier. If I can highlight it correctly. <laughs> All right. EBSCO host is a sponsor. At this point in time, you can start entering in keywords that go along with your particular topic. So let's say you're interested in cell phone use in classrooms. Well, I want to type in cell phones. And already it starts popping up pop potential topics for you. So I saw cell phones in schools. I like that. Let's do cell phones in school. You can do classroom as well, but I just picked that and it pulls up this particular website for you. Now, as you notice, you have 1,969 results. Well, that's good, but at the same time, that might be a little intimidating. Let's streamline it a little bit. 
like I said, for the purpose of this assignment, we're focusing on finding academic journals. So let's start to limit your search. You go to the left right here, limit search, or limit to, click on full text. And now it's only going to bring up links to articles that include the entire article, the full text of the article. Sometimes search engines and that databases will pull up articles that just have abstracts of those articles, and abstracts are basically summaries of the articles. You don't want that. You want the entire article. Okay? So next, you scroll down, and we're going to focus on academic journals. As you can see, we have academic journals, magazines, trade publications, newspapers, reviews, etc. So let's click on academic journals. And now we're down to 395. Now, as you scroll through, you're going to see that you're going to have the title of each particular article, and then it's a little abstract. Um, if you happen to click all results to help you out, you're going to see icons right here. And if it says academic journal, then you know, yes, indeed, that is an academic journal. Here, we have a title. Next, oops, let me go back to that quickly. Next, it gives you a quick little abstract or summary about that particular article that you can look at. And then it gives you publishing information up here as well. Say this particular source interests you. Go ahead and click on HTM full text or PDF, whatever you want to do. Now at that point in time, it pulls up the article. Now, you're going to have your source information up here for you to create your work site imagery out of. The database, it tells you what the database is, Academic Search Premier. And then from there, you have your journal article. Now, a lot of journal articles are very structured and really focus on a lot of academic jargon. Okay? Often with these academic journals, they get into formulas, mathematical formulas about how they came up with their particular methodology. Stay away from that. That's not really going to help you out. What you're going to be interested in, interested in is findings and discussion and also results and implications. And that's what I would focus on. Now, methodology, again, if you're a major geek, yeah, check it out. But again, it's going to go over some statistical information for you. Stay away from that. If you want to look at description of setting participants, definitely go for that. But a lot of information you're going to be looking for will be on your findings and discussion. Okay? Now, this particular abstract earlier said this was a qualitative stum or qualitative, excuse me, a qualitative article. So you're not going to see a ton of statistics. You're not going to see a ton of numerical data within this particular journal article, but you are going to find a lot of qualitative information, such as testimonials, quotes, examples, stories, etc. Okay? So your next step essentially is to look through this particular article. And like I said, stay away from the methodology a little bit, description of setting participants. If you want to look at it, you can. But I suggest clicking on findings and discussion. It goes right there, and with this particular journal article, you're going to have your subheading, and that subheading is going to give you information about what that section of the journal article will be about. And here it says, setting the rules for schools to be strict about it. So from there, we're going to look and observe rules within schools about cell phone usage. Here, breaking the rules. Well, that's pretty self-explanatory. It looks like these particular, or rather, this particular part of the journal article will be about breaking the cell phone usage rules. Self-imposed rules, students holding each other accountable, etc. So, read through this particular article. I would not just all of a sudden say, hey, I want to use this particular source because it mentions cell phones in it without looking through it. Okay, gang? I'm sorry, but research takes some time. You're going to have to skim through it at least and see if it jives with your own thoughts about research. Or rather, not about research, but about your topic. Remember, with your research question that you have developed. Do you believe research, or excuse me, do you believe cell phones should be used in a school or not? So you're going to have to develop a research question based on that particular topic, and you're going to find information in this journal article that flows along with this. Okay? So let's say that you do want to use information. Okay, we're going to use this particular source. Let's make a work cited entry out of it. You go to EasyBib. I have EasyBib pulled up for you. You click on your database option. From there, what kind of database article are you citing? Well, this is an academic journal, so you're going to have to find it. There's a journal article. If you keep scrolling down, you're going to have a whole gaggle of information. Well, you know what? This, as we know, an academic journal or a journal article. We're going to click on journal article. 
From there, EasyBib is going to pull up this particular information for you. Article title, contributors, etc. And now we just go through the process. So, go back and forth. The journal article itself, the great thing about EasyBib is, go ahead, copy and paste that particular title, put it into the article title, rather, not the journal title, the article title. Click on that, paste, keep the formatting of the title intact and the journal as well. Author, we're going to go back. Author, in this situation, looks like is Anita Charles. So we're going to go back to EasyBib. Click on there, Anita Charles. Journal title, where does it come from? Well, we go back. Looks like it's American Secondary Education. Let's paste that over. Volume issue series. Well, it looks like it is volume 40, issue 3. Issue three. Year published. It looks like it was 2012. From there, pages, start to end. Let's just start by pages. I'm looking and I don't see any there. I thought I saw or I thought I saw some in the abstract. Let's go back to that to the abstract and look. Down here, or rather up here, pages four through sixteen. Let's say 13 pages in length. So we go back, starts on page four, ends on page, I believe it was 16. Don't quote me on that. Database. Remember again, our database is. Oh, here's another format, and I can get into that with you in class also. But let me go back to the HTM full text format. Academic Search Premier. Date Access. That's today's date. Uh, today's date is the 23rd January 2015 already. Good grief. URL. MLA says you don't need to include the, ML, uh, the URL, so that's a good thing. Display URL. No, we don't need to do that. Click Create Citation. And you are good to go. That is your particular citation, and rather your work cited entry, or your academic journal. And you're well on your way on gaining research and looking up research for your particular topic. Okay? Now, with that said, I am showing you this particular website. Make sure you have created an account. As you can see here, I need to log in. I will do that in the next particular video, and I'll show our, our jobs that you can make and create with um, EasyBib and how you can save your works cited entries as you go on. Okay? So with that said, that is about it for looking up academic databases. If you, or excuse me, looking up academic databases, and in particular looking up academic journals on academic databases. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me, and we will continue on with our next video. And our next video will be looking up a magazine and databases.